you have to have a meaning in life that sustains you. Life is a serious business. You're all in. It's a fatal business, right? Everyone's in it up to their neck. And you need a meaning that can sustain you through that. And that's to be found in responsibility. We all know this, that it's better to live courageously than cowardly. Everyone knows that. That's what you teach people that you love. The reason that I think people believe what I say is that I'm very pessimistic. Most times when you, when you listen to someone who's, who's a motivational speaker, let's say, it fills you with a, a temporary optimism, but you go home and, and, and the wiser part of you knows that mostly it's, it's the painting over of rotten wood with, with a fresh coat of paint. And I tell my audiences very clearly that their life is going to be difficult and sometimes difficult beyond both imagining and tolerance. And that that is definitely in your future, if it isn't in your present. And for many people, it's in their present. And that that, and that, and that, that can be unbearable, that enough to turn you against life itself, to corrupt, to corrupt you, to, to drive you to nihilism, to drive you to suicide, and worse, to drive you to thoughts of, of vengefulness, of, of infinite scope, to not only be turned against yourself and your fellow men, but to be turned against being itself because of its intrinsically brutal, in some sense, nature. And, and that it's worse than that, actually, because it's not only that we suffer, and, and that that will necessarily occur, but that we all make our suffering worse because of our ignorance and our malevolence. And everyone knows that to be true. And so the discussions start, let's say, on, a, on an unshakable foundation. But then I can tell people, look, despite that, despite that, we're remarkable creatures. You know, we're capable of taking up the burden of that suffering and facing the reality of that malevolence voluntarily. We can actually do that. And all of the psychological evidence suggests, and this is independent of your school of psychology, if you're a practical psychologist, a clinical psychologist of any sort, the evidence is crystal clear that if people voluntarily confront the problems that face them, and the malevolence that surrounds them, that they can make headway against it. And not only psychologically, so it's not only meaningful to do that psychologically, which, which it is to, to confront the problems that, that torment you voluntarily, that's meaningful psychologically, but it's also practically useful in that you can actually solve some of the problems that beset you. And God only knows how good we could get at that. You know, I mean, I don't know what percentage of human effort is spent in counterproductive activity. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an absolute cynic about that, but I mean, when I talk to undergraduates, I ask them, you know, how much time do you waste every day by your own reckoning? And it's somewhere between five and eight hours. I walked the stu students through an economic analysis of that. I said, well, you know, why don't you value your time at $50 an hour and calculate for yourself just exactly what you're doing to your future by your inability to discipline yourself. It's worth thinking through. In any case, people do waste a lot of time and they, are, they also act counterproductively a lot of the time. Regardless, we do make progress and, 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 and we can thrive under the difficult conditions that make up our lives and we can resist the malevolence that entices us. That's within our power and we don't know the limits to that. And we also know that it's better to, we all know this, that it's better to live courageously than cowardly. Everyone knows that. That's what you teach people that you love. And, and, and we know that it's better to live truthfully than in deceit. 
And you can tell that too, because that's also what you tell people that you love. And we know that you should pick up your damn responsibility and move forward. Everyone knows that. It's, it's part of our intrinsic moral nature. And that nature is there. And it's not difficult to communicate to people about this. Like everyone knows that you wake up at three in the morning when you've left, let your life go off the rails and that you berate yourself for your uselessness and your cruelty and your failure to take the opportunities that are in front of you. And if you were the master in your own house, in some sense, the captain of your own destiny, if there was no intrinsic nature, well, that would never happen. You'd just let yourself off the hook. There'd be no voice of conscience tormenting you. But no one escapes from that. And what that indicates is, to me is that, at least psychologically, we live in a universe that's characterized by a moral dimension. And we understand that well, and that moral failings have consequences and that they're not trivial. They destroy you. They destroy your family. They destroy your community. And, and you can tell people that. And they listen because they know. They don't know they know. That's the thing. And maybe that's the thing about being an, an intellectual. You, know, you have the opportunity to articulate ideas that other people know, they embody, but they can't articulate. And that's what people tell me, you know, they say, well, you help me give words to things that I always knew to be true, but couldn't say, or they say, I've been trying to put some of your precepts into practice, responsibility being a main one, vision, another honesty, I, I suppose, bringing up the pack and saying, and this is the fun part of doing all of this. Fun is a weak word that it's, it's, it's a, it's the remarkable part of doing all this. I mean, I have people tell me constantly wherever I go. It's so delightful that, you know, they were in a pretty dark place and they tell me why. And there's plenty of dark places in the world. And they decided, well, maybe they were gonna develop a bit of a vision and take a bit more responsibility and start telling the truth and putting some effort into something. And they come up and they say, well, you can't believe how much better things are. It's like, <laughs> I've, I, got, I got three promotions. Oh, I had one guy tell me, this was a lovely story, you know, 15 seconds. He came up after a talk. He said, two years ago, I got out of jail. I was homeless. He said, I own my own house. I have a six figure income. I got married and I have a daughter. Thank you. And that was the whole conversation. It's like he decided. He decided he was going to put his life together. And you know, and so you can look at that pessimism that, 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 that constitutes, let's say, the core of what, well, I think it's the core religious message really is the, is the tragic nature of the world, the reality of suffering. It's, it's part of the core religious message. But what emerges out of that properly conceptualized is a remarkable appreciation for what human beings are capable of. Like we are unbelievably resilient and, and able creatures. And we do not have any conception of our upper limits. I would say for the last 45 years, we've told psychologists have been, have been certainly to blame for this, at least in part, you're okay the way you are. That's what we tell young people. Oh, you're okay the way you are. It's like, and there's nothing worse than you can tell that you can tell someone who's young than that, especially if they're miserable. Oh, I'm miserable and aimless and sometimes I'm suicidal and I'm nihilistic and I don't have any direction in your life. It's in my life. It's like, well, you're okay the way you are. They don't want to hear that. They want to hear, look, you know, you're, and you know this, you're useless. You haven't got started. You've got 60 years to put yourself together and God only knows what you could become. And that's so, that message is so much more, it's so funny because it's so, it's such an attack, but it's so positive because there's faith there in the, in the potential that makes up the person rather than the miserable actuality that happens to be manifesting itself at the moment. And young people respond extraordinarily well to that because, and you know that if you're a parent and you love your 
your child, your son, your daughter. What you're trying to foster is the best in them. You want that to manifest itself across the course of their life. You want them to become continually more than they are, to see what they could be. And well, and I think that's part of the great message of the West is that that's, that's, the, that's the ethical requirement of individual being in, in, in the proper sense is to constantly note that you're not what you could be to take responsibility for that and to, and to commit yourself like body and soul to the attainment of that ideal. You, you have to have a meaning in life that sustains you. Life is a serious business. You're all in. It's a fatal business, right? Everyone's in it up to their neck. And it's, it's dreadful in some sense. And you need a meaning that can sustain you through that. And that's to be found in responsibility. And that's something that we have not communicated I don't think well to ourselves, but we certainly haven't communicated it to young people. It's like, well, you're lost. There's reasons that you could be lost and they're real. You know, God only knows what terrible things happen to you in your life. It's like, how are you gonna get out of that? Well, not by pursuing impulsive happiness. That is not going to work. Not by thinking in the short term, not by thinking in a narrowly selfish manner either, but by taking on the heaviest load of responsibility that you can conceptualize and bear. That will do it. It'll do it for you. It'll give you a reason to wake up in the morning. It'll give you a, a bomb for your conscience when you wake up at night and ask yourself what you're doing with your life. It'll make you a credit to yourself and to your family, and it'll make you a boon to your community. And more than that, there's more than that, you know, it's said in the Genesis that every person is made in the image of God. And there's an idea in Genesis that God is that which confronts the chaos of potential with truth and courage. That's the logos. And if we're made in the image of God, that's us. That's what we do is we confront the potential of chaos, the future, the unformed future. We confront that consciously and we we decide with every ethical choice we make what kind of world we're going to bring into being. We transform that potential into actuality. And we do that as a consequence of our ethical decisions. And so it's not only a matter of putting yourself together and putting your family together, and putting your community together. It's a matter of bringing the world in its proper shape into being. And I truly believe that that's the case. And I believe that we all believe that. Like we hold ourselves responsible. You know that if you've made a mistake with your family, you know, because you were selfish or narrow-minded or blind in some manner that you regard yourself as culpable. You could have done otherwise. And now you've brought something into the world that should not be there and it's on you. We, we, we hold ourselves responsible in that manner. And so what that indicates to me is that in a deep sense, we believe that we are the agents that transform the potential of being into reality. And, and that is a divine, if anything, is, links us with divinity. It's our capability to transform what is not yet into what is. And, and the other thing that happens, and I'll stop with this in Genesis, and this is so interesting, it's so fascinating, is that as God conducts himself through this enterprise of the transformation of potential into actuality, he stops repeatedly and says, and it was good. And, then that, and that's a mystery. Is it, why is it good? And the answer is something like, well, if, what, if you conduct yourself with the courage that enables you to accept your vulnerability, which is no trivial matter, and if you're truthful, then what you bring out of potential is what's good. And that sets the world right. And that's up to us. And to me, that's the great, that's the great story of, of the West. That's why we regard ourselves as sovereign individuals of value is that's what we are. And we need to know that, to take ourselves seriously and to act properly in the world.